What's up, everyone? Welcome to Bill Bronze and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bron Bafflestone. So today we're having another battle report for my Molbron Dowlock Stone build, which I've been playing on a Westmart server called the Forged Concordance, which has impressed me to no end. It's huge, tons of games, expert DMs, very organized, so highly recommended. All of the relevant information will be in the video description below. Feel free to check it out and we can adventure together. So today's adventure was called Exploring Mydath, run by DM Endar. And DM Endar did a fantastic job. As I mentioned in previous battle reports, as I'm climbing higher in rank, I'm finding that the DMs are very experienced, very knowledgeable, great with the rules, and often come with really detailed and uh, you know consistent worlds. And so DM Endar was actually rolling out a new consistent world and this was only the second adventure in it and I am really excited for more because as we'll see as I talk about the story it's very relevant to Bill Braun personally and so yeah really excited to explore it and really enjoy the adventure there today. So the story begins as it always does with Bill Braun riding in from Vascala to the Forge Concordance headquarters rolling up to the job board and looking for a gig. And I came up and saw that there was a turtle with a steel mission in his hand. So Bill Braun went up and introduced himself to Leo, who turned out to be a clockwork sorcerer, very calculating type, which I came to appreciate. And he had actually heard of Bill Braun, even though we never met because Bill Braun's writing job reports all the time. So in this case, my reputation preceded me and he was happy to join uh, to let me join the team. And then we filled out the team with Dorisk, who is a very lean and wiry half-orc that is a blade singer, whom I have adventured with in the past. And then two strangers to me, Ingot, who was an extremely and unusually civilized and articulate goblin, who was an artillerist artificer, and Lemmy, who was a human, very tall for a woman, at a, uh, she was a six-footer, and she was a mercy monk and peace cleric. So that was the team. And the job was for one Novus Dayshout, who was asking us to save her people and come to Harun to talk to her about it. And this kind of actually sparked something in Bill Brown's memory because he actually rides through Harun every time he comes to the Forge Concordance HQ from Vizcala. And this time he had noticed there was some kind of like tent city being assembled there and he was like mildly curious but you know not curious enough to actually stop and check it out <laughs> so this job was calling us back to Haroon and I thought okay maybe there's a connection and it turns out that there was this tent city was apparently a, a refugee camp and when we met our client Novus Day Shout she explained why and First of all, she was a very alluring and interesting fire genasi, which of course grabbed Bill Bron's attention because he's also a genasi. And to Bill Bron's astonishment, this entire refugee camp was of genasi, which was unheard of to him because he'd literally never heard of a community of genasi before. As far as he's aware, genasi are super rare and you know, the only ones that he know of are the ones that are the slave of the great Buku, like himself and, you know, his mom and grandma. So this was really weird. And he actually never met a fire genasi before and just found her look and uh, just demeanor incredibly appealing, uh, which led to a seduction attempt later, <laughs> which I'll talk about. But in any case, she laid out the, you know, what was going on, which was that she and these other refugees, she was the leader, came from a demiplane called Mydath, which was created a long time ago by a legendary caster called Enil Greensurge, who, you know, created this realm and it was populated by Genasi of all types, but the Genasi of that plane were fleeing now. And like, this was literally all that was left of them because there were like three major things happening there. One, there, was uh, kind of like a civil war going on between the Genasi. So first of all, the Genasi had like enslaved all of the elementals there. And so 
there was an enmity between the elementals and the Genasi themselves, and there's a ton of elementals there. And then the Genasi themselves were having a little bit of a civil war, because remember, there's, you know, fire and earth and water and air Genasi. And apparently the air Genasi were causing trouble. They were calling themselves the true eagles, or at least a faction of them were doing so. And, you know, air Genasi are pretty arrogant. <laughs> and so they kind of thought that they should be in charge, I guess. And so that's what the Civil War was all about. I have to say, I don't know all of the details. Just got a very big picture um, understanding of all of this. So the Civil War was an issue. Then there was also the appearance of this extra planar race called the Neogi, who were described to me as like eel spider people with psychic powers, which sounds pretty nasty and gross, quite frankly. We didn't actually encounter any Neogi on this uh, adventure, so I can't verify that, but uh, yeah, they don't sound like the most pleasant people, uh, which we'll find out as I go further into the story. And then finally, there was some kind of disease or curse sweeping across the land that was transforming Genasi into monstrosities, a variety of different monsters and stuff. So that's not good. So that's why all of these Genasi were fleeing Maidath and trying to create this refugee camp here near Harun. And Novus was hiring us, the Forge Concordance, to go back into Maidath and start winning it back, start trying to clear out areas. There are several cities of Genasi there that you know need to be protected. And the overarching goal was to discover the long lost laboratories of NL Green Search because apparently there are a bunch of them scattered throughout the land. And if we could find them, we could not only recover, you know, ancient magic and technologies and stuff, but also set up teleport circles there, which would allow for, you know, much greater maneuverability and, you know, uh, staging areas for future, you know, enc uh, encounters. So, okay, sounds great. Bill Brown is really excited to see this land created by the Castor Green Surge that's full of Genasi, and he really wants to impress Novus because we actually had time to take a long rest before we headed out. We arrived in Haroon like late at night, so we were going to head out in the morning. And so, you know, Bilbron took his opportunity to sneak his way over to Novus's tent and, you know, maybe do a little bit of charming and kissing and stuff and got rebuffed is very unusual because Bill Braun is super charismatic and super good looking and you know he's evil so got this whole bad boy thing going on and pretty used to uh, girls being charmed by him pretty quickly so a little taken aback by this but hey Nova seems to be an unusual person very bubbly and optimistic and stuff even though Clearly, she's got a lot of leadership responsibilities. People were constantly coming up to her and, you know, asking her stuff and, you know, things of that nature. So a big load on her shoulders. And uh, yeah, anyway, uh, Bill Brown didn't get too far, but she did seem to like him. And we headed out the next day. They had also given us a couple of tools. One was a compass that would kind of point us in the general direction of the nearest laboratory. And then also a teleport device. So we didn't have to come back to any kind of location. We could penetrate as far into the land as we wanted and then come back when we were ready. And so all we had to do was explore up to four of the hectares. But the more that we did, the you know greater our pay. So we were planning on going in and clearing as many he hectares as possible. Didn't really work out that way, as I will explain. But... We started in uh, the last discovered laboratory, which was in a forest hectare. So we confidently head out and we're really encountering too much trouble. Uh, we're walking towards uh, the mountains where this compass was kind of leading us. But while we were still in the forest, we did encounter this giant demonic thing. Bill Brown had never seen anything like it. so. Uh, well, actually, you know, he did encounter something like it before, but he didn't actually know what it was. And we engaged it, and it was pretty amazing. It, it had some cool powers, like someone tried to hit it with a mind sliver, and not only was it not affected, but it like reflected the psychic energy to everyone around it and did damage with it. And it did like this uh, whirlwind attack where its arms were out, and it was like hitting everybody and knocking them prone. And it was pretty tough, but. This was a really great party, I have to say. Oh, and to backtrack a little bit, 
before we even head out, I want to credit Leo, who put the team together, and so Bill Brown was considering the party leader. He actually insisted that we sit down and take some time to talk ta talk tactics, describe what we can do, what spells we can cast, what sort of things we like to do in combat, look for synergies, and well, okay, if this happens, then maybe this person will cast this on that person, which was so welcome, because Bill Braun always wants to do that sort of thing, but has found that most players at the Forge Concordance consider that boring and dispensable. And so oftentimes we're going into combat just stumbling over each other, which is often comical. I mean, hey, I'm having a good time watching this stuff. But also being part of a lean, mean combat machine is pretty fun, too. So, yeah, we were going into this very well briefed and, you know, with an understanding of how we could work together. And so, yeah, we uh, defeated this thing like super easy. It was great. We smashed it. Um, and then afterwards... Bill Brown was infuriated to discover that this creature, which I uh, later found out to be a star spawn Hulk, was actually an Earth Genasi that had gotten transformed. And oh, that chapped my butt. Because, you know, it's Bill Brown's an Earth Genasi man, and he doesn't really, haven't really encountered any others, so these are his people. And this was a person that hadn't personally pissed him off and, you know, marked himself for death or anything, which is always a possibility when you're talking about lawful evil dudes like Bill Brown is. But yeah, this was just some innocent Earth Genasi got turned into a monstrosity. I had to kill it, and I actually was doing the heavy lifting on that battle, so I was like, man, really kind of upset and ready to put an end to this BS. So yeah, things started well, but then we made a tremendous mistake. We entered the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Just a poor, innocent little group of casters and monks. Very slight, no, nobody really strong or athletic. We decided to go into the mountains, not knowing any better. And it was cool at the beginning because like right when we came in, we saw the weirdest thing, especially to Bilbron and Earth Genasi. We witnessed an Earth Elemental and an Air Elemental, and it seemed like they were in love. And they were trying to um, have Congress, um, which was very strange and ultimately turned out to be quite comic and tragical. But uh, yeah, they separated quite distraught, not being able to fully consummate their passions. But in the wake of their attempts, we were able to discover a few gems. And these gems seemed to be very soft and you could actually crack them and crumble them up very easily and it would turn into a dust. And so Ingot, being quite brave and curious, uh, did so and then sprinkled it on himself. And it turns out that it made his fingers all webbed and gills appeared, which is quite alarming. At first I thought, oh my God, is he gonna be able to breathe? But apparently, you know, it's cool in the air and this just made him super effective in the water, which would have been awesome if we hadn't been in the middle of a mountain range. So, okay. But still, it was a very interesting and cool thing to see that Bill Brown was happy to explain to Novus later, especially because of the connotations, if you get what I mean. Um, yeah, so, okay, things started out great going into the mountains, but then things got, got bad. Because it turns out that climbing mountains is tiring and you need to be athletic and none of us were. And even though Bill Brown was throwing in a, a, an automatic success, because we were having to make athletics checks to traverse these mountains. And Bill Brown, as an Earth Genasi, has Earthwalk. So he's just kind of gliding along the mountains, no problem, with an automatic success. But no one else could make the rolls, man. And we just kept going in circles, and not making any progress, and eventually just getting exhausted. Because after eight hours, we started rolling for exhaustion levels. And of course, even though Bill Brown has a great constitution, I ended up rolling like crap. And after like 11 hours, we hadn't gotten that far. Uh, we did encounter a group of uh, a bunch of mud methods being led by an earth elemental. And I kind of expected that to get hot and aggro, but Leo talked to him. One thing I liked about Leo is he does like to talk first, although he can get a little, go a little overboard with that, as we'll discuss later. But in this case, it worked great. I wasn't expecting it because earth elementals are notoriously hostile and jerks, but... Leo was incredibly persuasive, as we see, and so we were able to walk past uh, in peace with just some, uh, you know, 
s talking and threats <laughs> passing back and forth as we uh, steered each other down and walked past each other. Um, but yeah, by the end of the day, we were beat. And Bill Brown had taken on two levels of exhaustion. So stumbling around at half movement and, you know, disadvantage on all of his checks, including initiative. And we were like, guys, we have got to take a long rest because we've been out it for like 12 hours at this point. And so we tried to find a long rest. But unfortunately, the place that we decided to uh, settle on was already occupied by a, a gargoyle. And man, Bill Braun through Fargar tried to talk some sense into this thing because it was being all aggro about like, this is my territory, you must leave. And I was like, guy, dude, if we go anywhere, I'm a, we're on the verge of death. And I'm not afraid to tell you that because even on the verge of death, I can kick your ass 10 ways to Sunday without even breaking a sweat. So this is your only offer. We live in peace. We forget we ever saw each other and you let us rest or it's on and we send you to hell. He chose hell. So what can I say? Stupid, uh, stupid choice. Party unloaded on him. Let me actually uh, successfully stunning strike it, which was literally the first time I've ever seen it work. I've seen it attempted many times, but it's never worked, uh, at least until I've seen, uh, at least as I've seen until today. And yeah, we just pounded the crap out of it. And then we took a long rest. But of course it wasn't that simple. Because as we're long resting, a giant fog of poisonous fumes rolls in and decides to stick around for an hour or two, poisoning the entire party, pretty much, uh, except for Bill Brun, who used a meld into stone to safely long rest. But then, the, in the morning, it turns out all of this poison had like left behind a ton of fungus, this yellow spores and stuff, which diseased a bunch of the party. And Bill Brown actually had to use his inspiration to successfully not be diseased. But nonetheless, three people were diseased. And it was a terrible disease where you're literally afflicted by the confusion spell. <laughs> so, yeah, completely debilitating. Thankfully, I think Lemmy uh, had Lesser Restoration available. And so three Lesser Restorations later, the party's back in fighting shape. And we were able to get the hell out of the mountains, which, man... I was not too, as an, even as an Earth Genasi, the mountains were pretty brutal. I was pretty happy to get out of them, and the whole time the party's like, God, we should have gone around the mountains. <laughs> oh, we had one more encounter before we got out of the mountains. We actually came across a couple of Earth Elementals, and uh, these ones were, you know, pretty aggro, and so we ended up fighting them, and it was really ugly for them, because this party had so much thunder damage. We opened up with like a 48 damage shatter that hit both of them. And then Bill Braun hit them with a thunder step. And then there was a lot of boom and blade going on. And so, yeah, those earth elementals got shattered into rubble pretty quickly. And then we moved on into the forest. But yeah, anyway, we get out of the mountains and back into the forest. And the compass tells us that the laboratory that we're looking for is in this hex somewhere. So we spend hours looking for it and finally discover an illusory entrance to a stone cliff. And yeah, it had the laboratory in it. So yes, that was our mission parameters, mission success. And we were considering it heading back, but we first decided to stay in and investigate the area because we'd found a bunch of crates and stuff. Um, and inside the crates, we actually found this amazing weapon oil that if you put on your weapon, it turned it magical and did uh, damage. Basically, it was an elemental weapon, which uh, was kind of annoying to find it in the last encounter because we couldn't use it in any further encounters. Um, and then we did one final search of the general area, just making sure that it was secure. Because we did talk a moment about maybe going into the laboratory and possibly clearing it out of any creatures that may have taken up residence there. But we ultimately decided that that was beyond our mission parameters and it was probably something best left to another team on another day. But just doing our due diligence, we did one final investigation check and we came across a giant. Looked like a stone or a hill giant to me. Uh, I'm a little bit of an expert on giants because I studied Abigail's notes, but they're just drawings and stuff. So it's hard to tell when you actually see one, like which one it is. And it, it had a, a bow of some kind which I wasn't expecting. I was kind of expecting giants to be hurling boulders and stuff. So anyway, it was a giant and he was drunk as heck because he had this giant jug of what seemed to be almost pure alcohol that it was liberally swigging from. Um, and it also seemed to be a little bit insane. 
a couple of insight checks revealed that this thing was not all the way together upstairs. And Leo made friends with it. Again, Leo likes to lead with talking, which I'm fine with. And we did manage to befriend it. And it apparently was an escaped slave. One of the ways we made friends with it was by removing its collar. They had like an iron collar and, you know, ingot uh, had thieves tools proficiency and Bill Braun helped. And we were able to remove that collar pretty easily. And so we did befriend the giant and it informed us that the um, Niogi had been enslaving people and building something nefarious, like all the way out to the southwest. And so once we got that intel, people were trying to make friends with it and maybe bring it back to the refugee camp as like an ally or a pet. But they were just going way too far with this, let's try and be friends with it thing. It was clearly insane. And it kept talking about going into like a nearby Genasi city and causing trouble. And I kind of expected the party to wise up and kill this thing. And they never did. They were actually letting it go. And I was like looking around, waiting for anybody to talk sense. No one did. So once it got to 120 feet range, Bilbron hit it with an Eldritch Blast, scored a critical, blew the top of its head right off its uh, neck, and uh, yeah, with a little comment about it needing brain surgery, uh, Bilbron said, you're welcome. Um, and then one last thing that I need to mention. When we were in the mountains, we encountered a Warforged merchant puttering around. I mean, it was the strangest thing, not the sort of thing that you expect when you're, you know, climbing Mount Everest or whatever, a little robot walking up with a giant bag of stuff on his back. And it turned out he was a merchant. He offered us the opportunity to buy a few things, but we were very curious about him because what the hell is a Warforged doing here? We were told this was like Elementals and Genasi and Niyogi. What's going on here? Um, but it was damaged and we weren't able to fix it even with a mending spell. So we didn't get too much intel from it. But it did agree to guide us through the mountains, because again, we were not having much trouble, or not having a good time with the mountains. Um, and it was helpful, and we kept it with us, and we protected it during one of the battles or whatever. And then right when we were about to leave the mountains, we encountered another Warforged that apparently was a wanderer type, looking for the original one that we found. And so, uh, first it thanked us for protecting us, or protecting it, and then it gave us kind of a riddle that uh, it wanted answered, which I guess when we correctly answered it, gave it, you know, reassurance that we were helpful people. And so things were getting off to a pretty friendly start with these Warforged. But then they were very upfront with certain information that was extremely critical. And it turns out that they were part of what was called the Brotherhood of Brass, a group of Warforged that flew around on a giant flying ship called the Spelljammer which Bill Braun had never heard of before, but it sounded super cool. They could apparently fly through the different planes of existence. And so, yeah, uh, very cool. But they had crashed when they arrived in Midath, because when they came to Midath, they got very quickly attacked by a group of flying Genasi, which the party recognized as the True Eagles. Uh, the True Eagles being the name of the Air Genasi faction that was causing the Civil War. And apparently, when the Air Genasi attacked them, the Warforged had brought along with them some kind of exotic extraplanar substance that didn't react with them because they weren't actual life forms. But once the Genasi got on the ship, there was a kind of a, uh, a venom carnage sort of symbiosis thing going on. And this extraplanar stuff started transforming the Genasi into monsters. So it was them, it was the Brotherhood of Brass flying their stupid spell jammer in and bring in, you know, exotic substances that's causing this curse and this disease, which really pissed Bill Braun off because these guys didn't seem to really give a damn and were just like, we were just trying to repair our ship and get the hell out of here. And I'm all like, what about leaving it better than you found it, man? What about cleaning up your own mess? And Bill Braun actually activated his lava cloak and scored like a 25 intimidation roll, making it very clear to these dudes that before they chose to head out, they might want to do something about this disease or curse or whatever, because we're the Forge Concordance, man, and it wouldn't be too hard for us to make sure that spell jammer never goes anywhere ever again. And that point was well taken, 
and uh, they went off to their ship, which was to the south, uh, a bit to the east of this Neogi encampment where they were building something. And uh, yeah, so we got a lot of intel, and we returned to our um, client in Harun, Novus, and we reported all of this, Bill Braun giving her a very detailed download over dinner and wine, as I did manage to get her to agree to a dinner date. Yes. Um, and yeah, mission success. We got paid, we got our two badges, and Bill Braun is now very intrigued by this world of Midath, where his people have lived, or at least a, uh, uh, you know, a community of his people. And he met Nor Novus, who he's very uh, intrigued and, uh, you know, allured by. And it just so happens that Harun is right between his home city of Escala and the TFC HQ. So I'm literally riding through it twice a month or so. So with a promise to be a, uh, you know, a commonly seen face to Novus, uh, we headed out. And that was the end of the adventure. I really enjoyed it. The uh, combats weren't that dangerous for us because the team was well put together. We had our combat tactics down. Uh, we steamrolled most everything. And a uh, very, very intriguing storyline. So that's it. Thanks to, so much to DM Endar for providing me that experience. Thanks so much to the party for helping me get through it. And thank you so much for watching. This has been Bill Bronson Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bronson Bafflestone. See you next time.